Um, right, we're gonna we're gonna do our top ten ruckman in the AFL rankings. We we're gonna do we we're gonna rank each team's top ruckman as a top eighteen, but we've decided to just go pure top ten ruckman um, with a few honourable mentions. And for this year as well. Yeah, to clear up any more yeah. any confusion, it's just this year's form. So yeah, before you before the North fans actually North yeah. North don't have any fans, so we don't, <laughs> we don't have to worry about that. But um, we'll start with some honourable mentions. I'll kick it off. Um, I've got Matt Flynn in there. I know he's kind of he's he's hardly he's hardly even his team's first ruckman anymore. But when he when he was playing as the ruckman which he has done for more than half the season. He's actually been really good for them. Um, and mm. honestly, near the top 10, he's been putting out great numbers. And he's pretty handy as a key forward as well, as we saw on the weekend. Yeah. Um, Stefan Martin, I've got in there probably, I mean, he's he's definitely not a top half ruckman, but you can see the impact he's had on the Bulldogs this season, just allowing their midfield to finally get some first use of the ball. Doesn't really offer anything around the ground, but has had a big impact on his team. And finally, yeah. this bloke's probably not deserving of an honourable mention, but Mark Pitnett is a bit of a, he's a bit of a meme after last season. <laughs> but um yeah. he has improved. He's he's improved a lot over the over the off season. Far better stats this season, getting a few more touches. I mean, last season he had games where he'd get like three touches and he absolutely ruined my <laughs> ruined my super coach season that year. I traded him in after his two 140s. But, oh, yeah, man. he has improved and I don't know, he's just a average ruckman who has played every game and been serviceable. Um, we'll go, we'll do your honourable mentions and then we'll start at 10 and work our way up. Too easy. Um, yeah, I've definitely got Flynn in there. Obviously, can't just can't fit him in there because um, he's probably missed too many games with the Giants' obsession with Mumford, um, which is kind of fair enough. I think it'll be about yeah. five and zero with him, and then zero and five without him. But yeah, Flynn's exactly the type of player I'd want Saints to go for because he's obviously shown so much since his debut game, and I feel as though it'd be the perfect replacement for Ryder as that sort of um, ruck forward swing role because he can obviously play. In the ruck down up forward, he looked really good up forward on the weekend um, and probably had Ben Mackay for a lot of the games. So um, he's in there, obviously putting up a lot of great numbers. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the ruck merry-go-round this year, whether he um, sticks with them. Probably will, unfortunately. But we'll wait and see there. And, yeah, Pitney as well, obviously very serviceable for them. Obviously their most preferred ruckman at the moment. Stefan Martin's obviously been good for the dogs, as he touched on. So, yeah, I've, I've got about the same there. Um, no one else really to add there. Um, you know, the like I'm not going to bother throwing in the likes of Andrew Phillips or anything. But yeah. um, I was I've, tempted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could do that. But um, I've got Paddy Ryder in there. I haven't managed to fit him into the top ten just because he's missed probably a couple too many games. Um, yeah. And isn't having those best on ground performances as he's had last year or the year before yep. that. So. I've just had to leave him out, uh, but those are my honourable mentions, yep. Yep. If we were including last season and previous seasons, I probably would have had Paddy Ryder in my top 10, but yeah. just numbers numbers haven't been as good this season. Um, probably might be a bit due to the Saints being down, but um, yeah, he, he is getting old as well, to be fair to the great man. Um, all right, I reckon we rotate, so... Beauty. We'll just go, go one by one. In at number 10, I've actually gone with Matt Flynn's counterpart in Shane Mumford. Um, hasn't played many games, but when he has, he's surprisingly been really good, especially toward the start. He was getting huge hit-out numbers and taking big clunks around the ground as well. Um, and as you said, 5-0, 5-0 with Mumford, 5-0 without him or something like that. So he has had a huge impact on the Giants. And they have looked a much better team with him in there, even though Flynn's been good as well. Yeah, agree. Um, you obviously notice his sort of bullocking work around the ground, his ferocity. Um, you know, it's not really the style that many Ruckman play at the moment. Um, however, I've gone, this is going to be controversial, I've gone with your boy Scott Lysette, just hasn't played enough games to work his way up ahead of the guys ahead of him, uh, but has obviously been very good for them. And obviously Peter Adams and all that have gotten a bit of the light in the last few weeks because I've obviously been very promising through there. But 
yeah, look, if Lyce had played just about every game this year, he'd be in there, but obviously hasn't. So has found his way in at 10, but he's obviously a better player than that. Um, but yeah, it'll be good to hopefully get rid of all the dead weight Ruckman I've got. Um, in the, sorry, the, the good Ruckman, the dead weight teams I've got coming up here and to see Lyset progress all the way into September. But um, yeah. Yep. yep, fair enough. Unfortunately, big Scotty um, concussed Mick Henry. And got done for four weeks, which I yeah. it's not all stiff. But um in at number nine, I've got the Nank from Richmond. Um, he's huge for them. Obviously nowhere near the hit out abilities of some of these other big men, but he's arguably one of the best ruckmen around the ground, takes huge intercept marks, gets a lot of possessions, really mobile. You know, you see ruckmen that just look like They've just been pulled off the off the street who don't know how to kick a footy, but Nank looks semi coordinated and shows it with his with his numbers and work around the ground. Yep. I've also got Nank in at nine as well. Um he's obviously one of those ruckmen that, you know, they're not gonna get the same numbers as Gordon and Grunny and all that, but in terms of Richmond and Richmond's game plan and um the way they play, I think he's really good for them, obviously. The way he gets around the ground, um, Suits their fast attacking game style really well. Um, sees him racking up about 15 touches just about every week. And yep. he's often down back, which is um, taking huge inset marks, which is not a thing that many Ruckman do in the AFL. Um, or at least they do, but you don't. I don't notice it as much as I do with Nank. I think Nank's probably one of the most prominent um, key defensive intercept marks that I've seen, um, at least in recent years. He, he's been really good for them, obviously, um, Richmond got him for cheap as chips. So that was a very handy pickup for them. It's obviously contributed a lot for them over the last few years. But just another serviceable year for Nank um, and is a big reason why they've obviously done so well. And obviously with Charles, um, not Charles, sorry, Soldo missing, a lot of the weight's been put on him. Um, but yeah, obviously just done really well for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably his best trait, his ability to get behind the footy and take into set marks, which adds to Richmond's already elite defence. Um, I remember when we played them at Adelaide Oval, he took about six inner set marks, all from all from our defensive kick in. He just marked it outside the attacking fifty, which made me hate him for a couple of hours. <laughs> but no, he's he's a good bloke. Yeah. Um in at number eight, I have got Riley O'Brien, who probably should be higher than this, but just didn't not didn't have a good start to the year. He's finding form now. But we all know how good he is and he's going to have a huge career. He's still young. Um, like the Nank, huge work around the ground, can take big marks, get behind the footy and with an added, with an added um, you know, tap, tapping hit-out ability, which is obviously the main role of a ruckman. But I just think he hasn't, hasn't been his best season this year so far. But he has been building. So I expect him to increase in the power rankings in weeks to come. Yep, hundred percent agree. Um, I've actually got Tim English, who is obviously we all know about him. Obviously, still developing a lot in terms of his body and his game, but because of that, spends a lot of time up forward, and obviously because of that, it's a bit of a, yeah, it's a bit hard to judge on where you put him in this list on this list. But I've got him in here because you know, obviously, sometime in the future when he develops his body, he'll probably take a little bit longer than others to develop it, but. His um, ability to play up forward has been really handy for um, for him and kick a few bags because at that height and that sort of, I guess, forward craft that he's got um, is a real weapon for them. So um, I think he's really, really talented um, because at that height when you can, obviously, like you mentioned, pick and Ruckman off the street, um, he's still got a very nice kick on him and very good yeah. IQ. Um, so, yeah, in terms of a Ruckman who are all pre- usually pretty dopey, um, he's actually... Um, looks like he's a bit, um, really nice pick of the bunch there. So I've got English in at eight. Like I said, pretty hard to determine because he's obviously, obviously missed a few games this year. Um, so it's a bit of a controversial pick, but um, I just think just going forward, he always looks like such a threat um, in those marking contests up forward. I'd say English is just about one of the best in the AFL at taking those, even given his sort of light stature. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm going to leave him in at eight. Yeah, Tim English is who I want Peter Laddams to try and become and <laughs> ultimately become better than. Um, obviously not there yet, but they've got a lot yeah. of a few similar qualities. Um, 
Laddams is probably better in the ruck, but English is definitely a better mark, better key forward. Um, number seven for you North fans out there. Actually, you'll probably be disappointed that he's just slow, but <laughs> hasn't had the best of seasons, especially you know compared to his usual standards. But Todd Goldstein had a great game on the weekend. Has been, has still been, you know, one of the best ruckmen in the league. But yeah, I think it's just been an average year for him, and there's just been other blokes that have been slightly better. So the man's in at seven for me. Yep. I've got the exact same one as well, but Goldie in at seven. Um, obviously, just getting pretty old, so his numbers are just a bit on the declining side of things, um, as they are for obviously a lot of ruckmen that are getting towards the end of their careers. But he's obviously been um, a huge player for them in the entirety of his career and still manages to get really good um, numbers in the middle of the contest, clearances and all that. So he's always been a huge player for them. Um but yeah, like I said, coming to the end of his career, I remember that there was, oh, I can't remember what year it was, might have been 2015, well, I think it was Goldie and Steph Martin for Brisbane had two of like the best super coach seasons, um, the modern era, um, or at least it was AFL Fantasy, I remember they, were, they would consistently clock up 150s every game, so um, in the twilight of his career, he was obviously an absolute animal, um, still, still is a very quality player, but yeah, coming to the end of his career, so... Uh, to chuck him in at seven, at least you know at his age to get to seven is obviously still a really good feat. But yep. um, yeah, yep, exactly right. Um, and we do love Goldie; he's a fan favorite. I think it's kind. Of, he's one of those players where you just can't hate him. I don't know if it's because of his head or his <laughs> or his name or whatever, but he just, uh, just seems like one of those not nice guys, great blokes. So good, yeah. on him, good on him for that. Um, number six, I've actually gone with my boy here, Scott Lysette. Um, This is definitely higher than probably any non-Port fan would have him, but <laughs> I get to watch him every week and he's just huge for us. And especially this season before he got suspended, he's just he's really good around the ground, really mobile, can take marks, can get 20 touches, but he's also really improved his hitouts over the last two years, especially. And he, you know, he can he contends with you know, Grundy and stuff doesn't really, doesn't get beaten too badly. It would be like 30 to 26 or whatever. So he's really important. And you can, um, I know we're missing Butters and all that lot, but he's definitely been the biggest absence for us this season. We've gone to, we've pretty much gone to shit ever since he's been out. And Laddams hasn't even been that bad in his, in his spot to be fair, but it's just a huge, it's a huge out for us. And We'll be good to get him back this week. Just touching on Laddams, I need to. I I need to bring in the. Well, it's to do the perfect trade that I want to do. I need to bring in a four. It's about four hundred and forty k, and there's just not many options at all. And I looked at Laddams, I thought, wow, well, but then obviously noticed Scott Lysette was yeah. coming back, so that got rid of that plan. But yeah, I just wish he could Lysette could just you know do an ACL or something at training tomorrow. And, <laughs> That would solve my super coach yeah, team. Mate, but um, Laddams would genuinely be a top six forward if uh if that happened. Yeah, if but, yeah. yeah, if he played number one ruck. But yeah, it's, I, I love the um the enormous um difference between if Lice is in there and if he isn't. Um yeah. between Laddams' yeah, performance. Huge. But um yeah, and number six I've got Riley O'Brien. Um obviously had a poor start to the start of the season, but he was playing under an injury cloud and he's seemed to have gotten over it now. So that's very handy for him. He's obviously been um, a huge play for him in the last couple of years since he um, broke out and became the preferred ruckman over Sam Jacobs. And just, yeah, huge work around the ground, takes lots of really good marks um, in contests and all that. And yeah, talking about like like we said about Goldie, he's a huge fan favorite, the great man, probably because of his head as well. But um, yeah, gets down back, gets forward. Obviously, not the most fluent kicking style, but at the end of the day, he is an animal, and yeah, it just deserves to be at number six. Um, given he was one of those types of ruckman that um, could easily have been chopped at any oh, uh, any time before he sort of leapt down onto the scene. Um, so it's good to see those type of players come through and formulate really promising careers. But um. Yeah, it's it's good to see that he's out of that injury cloud now and playing his best footy. Um, because yeah, like like I said, he's just a quality player when he's at his best. Yeah, definitely a good player, and he's going to be an elite ruckman in his prime. Um, in at number five, I knew this guy had been good, but when I looked at when I looked through the stats, I was like, holy shit! But Sean Darcy <laughs> has just mm. been an absolute animal for Frio. He's 
he's averaging like 110 super coach or something like that, which is genuine yeah. elite numbers. But um, yeah, you can tell you can tell the impact he has on the games. He's he's a huge huge man. Wins most of the tap outs, and he's around the ground. He's really improved this season. He can take marks. He can get the ball. He just has a massive impact for Frio. Um, yeah, when he's not out there, they're definitely a far worse side. One of the most mm. improved players in the comp this season. A hundred percent agree. Um, I rate him that much. I've got him higher than that. So at the moment, I've actually got Tom Hickey in at five. Yeah, um, they, were, they were tight for me. Yeah, that was a very tight call. We've obviously got the top three the same, um, the same three plays. And yeah, four and five with their own category. And it's hard to split them, but I've got Tom Hickey in at five. Um, it's obviously been a revelation for the Swans this year. Um, you know, as a past Saints player, it's um, it's good to see these guys get an opportunity, given they were absolute spuds on our list. But um, he's obviously been really good for the Swans and his work around the ground and all that's been awesome. Um, you know, every time he was one of those plays, every time he got the ball, you know, you'd put your hands in your head thinking, oh, shit, what's he going to do now? But um, yeah, this year he's, looked, he's obviously been really good for them and um, had that miraculous recovery from that injury. I think. Um, Peanut, one of our mates, said he's used about three or four trades on Tom Hickey this year because of it. But, um, yeah, he's obviously been awesome for this year. It's great to see him thrive in that new Swans environment um, and just sort of revitalise revitalize his career. Um, I think he was, if, he's, if he was a bit more popular, he'd also be one of those fan favourites like O'Brien and Goldie, and this time yeah. it was definitely because of the pill. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's um, yeah, he's been a very solid player, so worthy of a top five spot for this year in terms of the Ruckman. Yeah, yeah, definitely agree with the uh, the fan, fan favourite call. He's got one of them, yeah. <laughs> one of the funnier heads in the AFL. Um, I've obviously, I've obviously got him at number four. He just pipped Sean Darcy yeah. for me. I think Darcy's arguably had better numbers this season, but I think just the impact. Hickey's had on the Swans this year. If you take him out, I mean, I don't think they're they're in the top eight. Um, he's been one of their best players and probably up there in the best and fairest with Callum Mills and maybe a couple of others. But yeah, he's just been huge, which is good to see. Do you know if he did he play in the grand final West for West Coast or did he not play? Because no, Nick, he it was Vardy no, last there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually don't know if. Hickey was on the list at that point. Oh, wasn't he? Oh, wait. oh, oh he might have been, but um, yeah, no, it was. Yeah, it was, Vardy was the one in there. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember which year Hickey got onto the Eagles. Yeah, list, but, Hickey might have went um, the following year, actually. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, done, um, but yeah. So you've got Darcy at four. I've got Darcy at four. Um, I've never seen Game of Thrones, but I think many people have touted him as Hodor. I think you pronounce it. Um, Looking him up right but, now. Yeah, it's H O D O R. I think he got drawn comparisons in his debut oh. game. Um, I remember his That's debut cool. game. It was against um, Geelong at GMHBA, and it was a bit of a blowout, as you'd imagine. I think Freya were a bit worse back then. Um, but I think he crushed the um, hit outs on debut record um, by about more than double. Um, just came in as that number one ruck. You could tell this guy was an absolute beast in the ruck, and it was just around the ground what he can do. But He's clearly worked on that and he's clearly a much better play because of it. And his work up forward as well has been huge for them. So I think that's going to be a nice little partnership, Darcy and Tracy going forward for the Dockers. Um, yep. Yeah, Darcy's gained that um, ruck forward status in AFL Fantasy, which has been handy. But um, yeah, he's obviously been a huge player for them this year. And he's just, he's really nailed on that consistency. I think if you look at the numbers, it's just every week now, which is what you want from your ruckman, I mean, you don't want them sort of getting beaten every two or three weeks. You want the consistent players in there just doing their hard yards. If they're not winning the contests in the ruck, you want them around the ground, maybe kicking a couple of goals. So that's exactly what he's doing and has just um, stamped himself in there as their main ruck for the next sort of decade. So um, it's been awesome for him and the Dockers as well because they had a bit of, they had about three or four ruckmen in contention for that this year who were all probably at the right age to get that spot and obviously Darcy's taken it um, with both hands. So it's been awesome to see him do that for the Dockers. Yep, it's been huge. He's a he's an absolute gun. Freo are making a habit of developing some absolute Goliaths in their, mm. in their rucks. Um, yep, so on to the big three. It's a clear top three. Ranking them was pretty tough. Um, 
I think it kind of depends what you want in a ruckman because they're all slightly different. But um, I've gone with Brody Grundy at number three. Um, I just I'll speak about Nick Nat now. I just think his what he brings is slightly more significant and important in the outcome of a match than Grundy. Obviously, it depends what you want out of your ruckman, what's what situation your team's in, but. Just what Nick Nat, when you take Nick Nat out of West Coast, it's just they're a whole different side. He just gives them gives their midfielders first use every time and they just kick kick goals out of the centre bounce, especially Optus, like no man's business. And he kicks goals as well himself and gets clearances. So, yeah, but Grundy, obviously absolute gun, arguably the most mobile ruckman in the league, gets the most disposals out of all of them, clearances, tackles, just does everything. Most most versatile ruckman in the comp easily. Yeah, have to agree. I've also got Grundy in at three. Um, yeah, his ability to get around the ground and, you know, rack up 20, sometimes close to 30 touches a game is really vital for them. Um, and obviously his work in the ruck contest is obviously superior and, you know, he takes really good marks around the ground. But, yeah, like you said, I've got obviously the other two ahead of him just because of, yeah, like you said, Nick Nat's just impact on a game and a big game um, is huge and it's just about the only player in the comp that can do that. And then go on, I think, we, we you know, there's nothing that needs to be said there. Um, just his ability to just about clunk every mark that comes to him um, and to tap just about every ball that gets thrown into um, his leading midfielder is his second to done. So, yeah, um, yeah I've, I've just got those two guys ahead of Grundy. Um because obviously at the end of the day, you do, you know, those obviously extra sort of 20, 25 touches um, are vital for your Ackman. But at the end of the day, um, it's it's, it's a difficult thing to put it because you obviously want your Ackman getting high disposal numbers, but you'd rather your Ruckman have the qualities, I'd say, of Gorn and Nick Nat more yep. so than your Ruckman getting 20, 25 touches, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's obviously got they've all got uncanny abilities, but in their own respects. So I'd rank the other two over Grundy's if that makes sense. That's yep. why I've got him in at three. Yep, I agree. Um, Nick Nat and Gorn, especially Nick Nat, just their ability to make their midfields that much better um, yeah. is probably something. It's probably that, the best way to put it. Yeah, probably something that Grundy mm. doesn't quite have. We we has it, but just not to the same extent. Um, but yeah, I've got Nick Nat two, Gorn one. We did you have the opposite or? No, I had Nick Nat two, yeah. Gorn one as well. Um, yeah, I see Gorn is just an absolute animal. Just yeah, I think just around the ground, I think, you know, just about every time he gets put on his head, he takes it. So um, I think that's probably the deciding factor for me. Obviously, Nick Nat's huge out of that centre bounce um, um, ball elapsed. but yeah, at the end of the day, I think Gorn's just. Yeah, he's just an absolute animal for them around the ground. I don't think yeah. too many people will be differing with that list either. I think obviously they're going to have the big three, but I think, yeah, Gorn and Nick Nat, I think is going to be the most common order. Yep. Yep. Agree there. Um, righto. So good little segment there. We'll move into a little bit of super coach chat, I reckon. Actually, just quickly, I want to say, yep. I'll ask you a question. If you're the Collingwood list management, we obviously talk a lot about these sort of ruck scenarios and in terms of how much they're worth. Now, I'm a big, I think we had this similar question, Lapotti, uh, a couple of months ago, probably with Hammer, and he said, you know, what's your call on the rucks? And I said, you know, they're my most important players on the ground and all that. And, just, you know, I laughed at the critics of the rucks, but yeah. would you have paid Grundy the same amount of money that as the Pies did, considering they obviously had to off- offload two players, um, Trevor and Stephenson? Yeah. Uh, would you have paid Grundy that amount, given they're also still in financial troubles, as has been documented, and they're probably going to hit it again this off season? Um, would you have paid Grundy the same amount, or would you have let him walk? Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I think in hindsight, you'd probably have to say that you wouldn't do it just because of what's actually happened to them, um, having to let go of those players, as you said, and just coming right out of finals contention which is a bit unfortunate. Um, but at the time, it was just after they'd lost that grand final, right? It was mm. after 2018. I mean, they probably just thought they're probably just doing everything they can to try and secure that premiership, which is fair enough. But in hindsight, I'd probably say no. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one. Yeah, um, I think as we've seen, you can 
you pick off a pretty good Ruckman um, for not much at all, whether it's through the draft or from another list. So, yeah, exactly. yeah, I think they were obviously very desperate to get that flag. But at the end of the day, given it's meant that they've lost Trelaw, Stephenson, um, Tom Phillips, and by the, by the sounds of it, they're not out of it yet. So, yeah, in hindsight, given they almost started a mini rebuild after it and he's taken up a lot of cap space, yeah, I wouldn't have done it either. Yep. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, you know, a wonderful thing. Those are the troubles of being a list manager. But um, yeah, uh, yeah well, it's a miracle. Oh yeah! What about that one? Unbelievable! Balotelli, Aguero! Oh! Crowd cheers. Here's Siddle. 